and showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Channel Pro 5-Minute Roundup. A look at news, trends, and tips for the SMB channel in five minutes or thereabouts. My name is Rich Freeman. I'm executive editor of the Channel Pro Network. I'm also a co-host of this program. I am joined this and every week by your other co-host, Eric Simpson, a business transformation and improvement advisor for MSPs and other IT providers. Eric, how you doing? Doing okay, Rich. Doing okay. Um, sheltering in place still like everyone else and, uh, you know, just taking it day by day. How about you, my friend? Uh, pretty much the same story. Uh, you know, here in Seattle, we, we, uh, we've applied for phase two status, Eric. So we're, we're looking forward to that. 50% uh, capacity on in-room dining. Things are looking up. Well, I hope it goes better for you there than it has in some states that have, you know, begun reopening early and now have considered be locking down. This is true. This is true. Yeah, I, I, I have that same hope. Uh, you know what, and th that's kind of a, uh, a sign of the times uh, sort of uh, item there that we're talking about here, and it, it ties in nicely to the top story we're going to be discussing this week, um, which is notable in a number of different ways, but it, it, there are some signs of the times kind of aspects to it that I want to focus in on. And I'm talking about the news from Veeam this week. Um, so Veeam uh, went into 2020, like so many uh, companies, vendors in our industry, thinking that they were going to do a big in-person conference. Theirs was scheduled to happen in Las Vegas in May. Um, it actually wound up happening online this week, um, their Veeam On conference. Um, so that right there is a sign of the times that we're doing all this kind of stuff uh, online. They announced um, a number of new products and then they kind of previewed some forthcoming products. Uh, you know, the, the new products are, are interesting, um, you know, especially if you are in the Veeam universe now. They have a, a second version, version two of their backup for AWS product uh, that came out. A number of new features in there, um, including one that does some cost estimating for you automatically, um, which uh, in the cloud world, especially around BDR, it can actually be kind of difficult to project what your costs are gonna be. And uh, they've got some functionality that automates that for you. They've got a new version uh, of their, um, uh, uh, availability orchestrator product that has some uh, interesting features to it as well, including um, the ability to uh, uh, integrate with snapshots for recovery purposes. Um, if you're looking for the lowest uh, recovery point objective and you want to minimize the impact of the network, actually um, working directly with the storage system is a great way to do that. Veeam has been doing that in other products for a while. Now their uh, availability, availability orchestrator can do that as well. But the, the sign of the times kind of uh, element to what they announced this week is the forthcoming um, in Q3, uh, fifth version of their uh, Microsoft Office 365 backup product. Um, now, you know, version five, it sounds like that product has been around for a long, long time. It actually hasn't. Theme is very, very quick uh, on their update cadence. And in fact, uh, version two of the AWS product, version one came out in December. They're on version two already in June. Um, but the, the backup for uh, Office 365 product hasn't actually been out there all that long, but it is uh, already today the, the fastest growing, uh, not just the fastest growing product right now for Veeam, but the fastest growing product in their history, which in and of itself tells you something about the world we're in right now. And that all kind of precedes the coronavirus. Um, but now, uh, as we find ourselves in the midst of the COVID-19 era and a lot of people working from home and teams all of a sudden becoming a huge part of everyone's life, the sort of key feature that they previewed in this upcoming Office 365 backup release is um, a granular recovery ability for Microsoft Teams. So they were backing up Teams data before because the Teams data essentially gets mixed in with SharePoint and OneDrive and they were backing all that stuff up before. So the team's data has been backed up. The question is just, can you recover it the way you want to? And often the way you want to is you just want to get this thread, that chat, that video. You don't want to get everything back. And that capability is going to be coming along um, within the next few months here. Um, but I mean, it's, it's interesting, Eric, um, you know, that uh, obviously cloud uh, is enormous, has been enormous. Office 365 has been this massive growth story. But Teams has been maybe the, Teams and Zoom, you know, have been the growth story of 2020. Um, and here we are, you know, looking at Veeam kind of putting the spotlight on very specific Teams functionality that I'm sure a lot of people will be uh, interested in, given how dependent they are on Teams these days. Yeah, a couple of takeaways, um, you know, from, from the 
from this week's top story is for me, you know, we're seeing the, the logical and I would argue natural evolution of the backup industry moving from the on-premise, you know, hardware, you know, sits in the office, local backup, then backup and, and replication and storage in the cloud. Now, historically, you know, throughout the, the maturity of the cloud here, it's, you know, it's, it's been challenging to back up these cloud platforms, especially Microsoft cloud platforms in a meaningful way that allows you to do what you could do on premise with on premise backups, you know, right, Rich? I mean, I, hey, if I want that one email message, I can restore that because it's backed up on my local server or on my, uh, you know, from a cloud snapshot or whatever. Um, but now that we're really accelerating, you know, these business key business processes to move toward more uh, cloud based applications, the industry now is shifting strategically to give us that same type of capability. And I would argue that um, the vendors that are creating these solutions are also having to think about how they're designed to allow that type of functionality. So this is almost like the last, you know, the last frontier, the final frontier for me. It's like, oh, when I can have the same ability to create uh, business continuity strategies for all my clients, cloud-based platforms, you know, including their critical line of business applications, which of course, Microsoft um, applications are, are right up there, and especially Teams, because now, as, as you mentioned, you know, we are using that as I think I'm seeing the shift from SharePoint. To, I mean, I have clients using Teams for, you know, document management and things like that, too. It's really interesting how when you give someone a tool, the different ways that they can use it. So the ability to really uh, rely more heavily on that and knowing that you have the ability to back it up and restore when you need to. And at such a granular level, that is, I mean, I think that is a tipping point in terms of moving forward with um, getting folks to accept the cloud is now truly becoming a real replacement for the on-premise stuff that we used to do in the past. And, you know, it, it's interesting that you, you uh, talk about the move from uh, traditional on-premises backup into cloud backup as well. I mean, Veeam for a number of years has been on a journey. You know, the, 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 the name Veeam comes from VM, as in virtual machine. They were initially a virtual machine backup company, but they've been on this path for a while now where they're, they're moving well beyond that to um, becoming a comprehensive data protection and management platform provider, on-premises, off-premises, uh, virtual, physical, doesn't matter. They want to be able to help you kind of back uh, uh, all of that up. And, uh, you know, so I, when I was interviewing Veeam executives this week, one of the questions I asked was, has the shift to cloud, which has accelerated in recent months, has work from home, has any of that changed your product roadmap or your product vision? And the answer was no, actually, because we were sort of headed down that path anyway. This was where we were going. Um, and, you know, the only thing that's changed is that things have kind of moved in that same direction uh, faster. Right. I mean, you would expect, you know, capable strategists to, to foresee this, this, you know, evolution and this maturity and this migration. I mean, ultimately, when, when we see um, vendors creating historical kind of boxed products, um, you know, operating systems and applications now making them completely cloud-based, um, you know, we have to, we have to like, like great Wayne Gretzky used to say, right? We've got to skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it is. And I think any vendor worth their salt, you know, is doing that. Well, we're talking about one kind of tool uh, that a lot of channel pros use. And I, I believe your tip of the week, Eric, has to do with tools, maybe a little more broadly. Yes. So again, you know, rip from the headlines, our tip of the week, uh, as I'm working with uh, a particular client. They've, they've taken the opportunity uh, during this you know, quarantine period to really evaluate their suite of MSP tools. And so, I mean, and so the tip of the week is to, hey, now's the time to not only evaluate your tools, but also to get your teams trained up. So also trained up on perhaps the tools that they haven't gotten training on to make them more effective and efficient and profitable 
and you know make tough decisions if if a tool that you um subscribed to years ago simply is just not cutting it anymore or because of you know internal um internal factors at the vendor like you know you know multiple acquisitions and and a rush to integrate a bunch of things and now it breaks a bunch of things and it's causing you heartburn and it's losing you clients and it's affecting your ability to rely on the tool and to provide the reporting that's necessary to reinforce the value of the service that you deliver to your clients, it may be time to look at other things. Um, so, you know, this is the time to, A, take inventory, right? Maybe you have tools that you're still paying for that you're not using anymore. Maybe there are, are other alternatives that can add more value, or maybe you've got disparate tools from different vendors and, and maybe there's a primary vendor that, that offers a solution that bundles and integrates all those together very, very tightly. And then again, maybe you've got tools that you know, have failed uh, over time to improve your ability to be more profitable. You know, when you're spending more time trying to fix the problems with your tools and to uh, tap dance with your clients about getting them you know, the reports and things like that that they need, um, maybe it's time to look for other solutions. There you go, Rich. You know, you, you spoken in uh, earlier episodes this year about, you, you know, uh, constructive ways to use downtime if you have it. Obviously, we're hoping everybody has, you know, more business that they can handle and they're continuing to grow and keep everybody busy. But if, if you do have idle time, you've spoken before about investing that time in, you know, strengthening your processes, increasing your technical skills, doing some of the things that you don't normally have time for. And this is another classic example of that. Um, you know, both reevaluating the tools that you're using and um, also, as you said, taking inventory of the tools you have. I mean, obviously, we're in a time when uh, the economy is in pretty rough shape. Uh, you've got to be really smart about conserving cash. You certainly don't want to be spending money on software that you're not using. Um, so that right there is, is probably a smart thing to do is to kind of look around at the subscriptions that you have right now. Um, for software and, and, you know, beyond and just see if there's anything uh, that you're paying for that you, you're not actually getting a lot of value from. Yeah, bingo, Rich. I mean, it's always, you know, and I, I recommend we, we audit, you know, what we're paying for on a quarterly basis. And, and beyond that, uh, campaign our vendors to give us better pricing on the regular. It's almost like improving your credit score, right? Over time, it's, you know, you, every six months, you know, you've got a, a calendar reminder that says, hey, you know, petition to increase your credit limit, um, you know, so it's that kind of thing. It's like continual ways to increase your profitability. And, you know, and you know, Rich, I grew up in New York, so, you know, I, I always fall back on that don't ask, don't get <laughs> philosophy. So uh, maybe not a lot of partners are doing that. So maybe your voice will be heard when you do ask. And maybe you've got such an investment with your particular vendors that, you know, they're, they're, they're forced to listen to you um, because heaven knows. We've got lots of other options now. I mean, this this wasn't the norm, uh, you know, when before I sold my MSP practice, right? We were kind of stuck with the few folks that we had, uh, but now it's you know, it, there's a lot of there are a lot of options out there, and you know, obviously there's there's a cost uh, and pain to ripping and replacing, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Uh, we find ourselves with time for just one more story again here. And uh, this week's story kind of touches on two themes that we, we have touched on fairly often uh, on the program here, Eric. Uh, you know, in normal times, we are both uh, travelers, frequent flyers. Uh, and we've also obviously shared all sorts of, you know, coronavirus related uh, anecdotes of one kind or another. So this comes to us from Switzerland. Now, you know, we're all, there's a lot going on in the world today. So we're all a little bit distracted. We're not maybe thinking as clearly as we, we normally would be. And even, even if the world wasn't in a crazy state right now, you know, when you're traveling, you're moving through airports and train stations and so on, we've all probably had that experience of just you know, leaving something behind accidentally. Um, but I'm guessing you've never left behind what a traveler on a Swiss train uh, left behind before, oops, accidentally, which was a bag containing $191,000 worth of gold bars. Uh, you know, can, can, and no one, by the way, has you know, called in, hey, do you have a lost and found or something? I left something on the train. They don't know who left this behind. They're trying to find the owner. 
but they have, uh, you know, failed to do so. I'm imagining myself personally just showing up at the hotel and sort of thinking to myself, there's something missing. I, I just know, I, oh, I know what it is. It's the $200,000 worth of gold I left on the train. Yeah. But it, it does, you know, I, if you've left, uh, you know, your, your water bottle behind at the airport, this, you don't need to feel bad anymore. It could be a lot worse. Yeah, this is such a, such an insane story. And, you know, the story, you know, to give a little bit more background to our viewers, I mean, this is something that the police have, like, actively tried to find whoever it was that left it. And they're not, they're not raising their hand at all. So, you know, my mind starts running with this story, Rich. And, you know, I can imagine, you know, it's, you know, we're talking about Switzerland, we're talking about Swiss bank accounts, we're talking about, you know, you know, unmarked bank accounts and things like that. I think maybe this was a courier and, you know, for whatever reason, got back to the boss and the boss went, what? And they whacked him. <laughs> and now they can't get their money because who knows where it came from, right? So I'm just, right. you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm Hollywood dramatizing it for us. <laughs> who knows what happened? Yeah, well, it, it stands to reason. This is, uh, this is gold that nobody feels safe claiming. <laughs> right. My gold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tough train trip uh, on that. Uh, folks, that is all the time we have this week on the five minute roundup. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like the program, you want to take a look at some old episodes that you missed, keep up on the new ones as they become available. Uh, please go to the Channel Pro Network channel on YouTube and subscribe to that. Make sure you click the little uh, bell icon if you want to get notified when the new episodes become available. Um, to read up on more news from Veeam, more news from the industry, to get great uh, business growth advice for your company, go to channelpronetwork.com on a daily basis because we have got great new material going up for you there every day. Uh, to learn more about Eric and the work he does with his clients, go to ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K Simpson.com. So um, thanks again for joining us in the Five Minute Roundup. We're going to be uh, back again next week with another episode. Until then, folks, please enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already.